Welcome back. Today is day two of Darnell Rock reporting. Let's get started. Let's get started with grammar. As you know, we are working on pronouns. I told you last time, there are three types. Last time, we worked on indefinite pronouns. Today, we're going to work on possessive pronouns. Possessive pronouns replace a possessive noun and shows ownership. Here are some examples, like mine, her, his, or theirs. That is her book. This bicycle is mine. Let's practice. I am going to identify the possessive pronoun being used in the following sentence. The house is theirs and its paint is flaking. I think the possessive pronoun being used here is theirs. Again, it shows ownership. Your turn. I want you to identify the undef um, possessive pronoun being used here. We shall finally have what is rightfully ours. I'll give you a second. If you said ours, you are correct. Ours shows ownership. For more practice, turn to page 260 of your reader's notebook during your independent task. Vocabulary strategy. As you know, this week we are focusing on Greek and Latin suffixes. The suffixes we're gonna focus on today are full, li, ness, less, and meant. Full is full means full of something, like wonderful. Full of wonder, beautiful, full of beauty, flavorful, full of flavor. Can you think of a word that ends in full? Li, it turns an adjective into an adverb. Like glad gets changing to gladly. Ness, it's used to refer to a state of being. Like being sad, sadness. Being bold, boldness. Can you think of a word that ends in ness? Less, which means without. Wire less, without any wires. Harm less, without harm. Can you think of a word that ends in less? Meant as a result or a process of doing something. Payment, retirement, or a process of doing something. Let's practice. How will you define the following terms? Cloudiness, delightful. Remember, less means without, full means full of. I'll give you a second. If you said cloudiness means without clouds or sunny, you are correct. If you said delightful means full of delight or charming, you are also correct. For more practice, please turn to page 256 of your reader's notebook during your independent task. Today, scholars, I'm going to focus on characterization. There are two types, direct and indirect. Direct is when the author or, na or narrator tells us directly about the character. Like he was tall and often made jokes about his height. The author told us directly about that the character is tall, I mean tall, and made jokes. It is more fun, I think, when the author tells us indirectly, where they give us clues for us to make inferences. Like he bumped his head on, on the doorway and laughed. Wow, they lowered that every day. I would guess if he was able to bump his head in the doorway, he's probably tall. And him responding, wow, they lowered that every day? 
means he doesn't really take himself seriously. And he was able to make a joke about it. To remember and direct characterization, I use the acronym STEAL. S for what the character says. T for what, how the, what the character thinks. E, what effect ca the, the character has on others. Are they friendly? Are they mean? A, how the character acts. And L, what the character looks like. Teachers, now is a great time to show scholars a video on a characterization. I would use a vocab the vocabulary video. Let's practice. Anna volunteered to help Kylie clean her house. When Anna watched the mirrors, Kylie asked if she used paper towels instead of newspapers. When Anna admitted that she had, Kylie asked her to redo them. Then, while Anna was sweeping, Kylie corrected her on her technique. Don't just push the dirt around, Anna. Sweep it, Kylie told Anna. What character trait does Kylie demonstrate? I'll give you a minute to figure it out. Remember, write the trait in your notebook and give text evidence to support it. I said that Kylie was bossy, unappreciative, and a perfectionist. I think Kylie is bossy because she showed no reservation when correcting Anna's technique. She And she gave her ad additional work. She was just bossing her around. I also think she doesn't really appreciate Anna, as Anna volunteered to help her clean her house. And lastly, I think she's a perfectionist because she may be acting this way because she can't bear to see things done incorrectly. Did you have the same thought? Very good. Let's continue reading Darnell Rock reporting. As you read today, I want you to think about how Linda and Darnell's arguments are different in tone and purpose. What do their actions and arguments reveal about each character? I'm going to begin reading at the bottom of page 574, where it says, the last paragraph where it says the issue at South Oakdale. I'll give you a minute to get situated. I'm going to begin reading. The issue at South Oakdale is should the old basketball courts be used as a parking lot or should they be used as a community garden? Who's going to pay for paving the lot? A councilman asked. Does it have to be paved? It's my understanding that it doesn't have to be paved, the head of the council answered. Am I right on that? Yes, you are, Ms. Joyner spoke from the audience. We have two young people from the school to speak, the councilwoman said. The first is, is a Miss Gold. Linda went into the middle aisle where there was a microphone. She began reading her article in the sn snottiest voice that Darnell had ever heard. He felt a knot in his stomach. He turned to look at his mother, and she was smiling. On the stage, some of the councilmen were looking at some papers. I hope I don't mess up, he whispered to, to Tamika. You won't, Tamika said. Linda finished reading her article and then turned toward Darnell. Although everybody would like to help the, the homeless, she said, schools are supposed to be for kids and for those who teach kids. Thank you. There was applause for Linda, and Ms. Joyner stood up and nodded toward her. Darnell felt his hands shaking. I am now turning to page 576. 
Darnell's name was called, and he made the long trip to the microphone. When I first thought about having a garden instead of a parking lot, I thought it was just a good idea, Darnell said. Then, when the journal asked me to send them a copy of my interview with Mr. Jones, I was thinking that it was mainly a good idea to have a garden to help out the homeless people. But now, I think it might be a good idea to have the garden to help out the kids, some of the kids, in the school. Sometimes, when people go through their life, they don't do the things that can make them a good life. I don't know why they don't do the right thing, or maybe even if they know what the right thing is sometimes. But I see the same thing in my school, South Oakdale. Some of the kids always do okay, but some of us don't. Maybe their parents are telling them something, or maybe they, they know something special. But if you are a kid who isn't doing so good, people start off telling you what you should be doing. And you know it, but sometimes you still don't get it done and mess up some more. Then people start expecting you to mess up. And then you start expecting to mess up. Teachers get mad at you, or the principal, or your parents, and they act like you're messing up on purpose. Like you want to get bad marks and stuff like that. Then you don't want people getting on your case all the time, so you don't do much because the less that the less you do, the less they're going to be on your case. Only, that doesn't help anything. And everybody knows it. But that's the way it goes. You seem to be doing all right, young man, the head of the city council said. I wasn't doing too hot before, Darnell said, taking a quick look over to where Mr. Baker sat. But when I got on the paper and the journal printed my article... Then everybody started treating me different. People came up to me and started explaining their point of view their point of view instead of just telling me what to do. And you people are listening to me. The kids I, I hung out with, they call us the corner crew. Are mostly good kids, but you wouldn't listen listen to them unless they got into trouble. Turning to page 577. In South Oakdale, some kids have bad things happen to them. Like, they get sick, and I don't know why, why that happens, but all they can do is to go to the hospital. And some kids just get left out of the good things and can't find a way of getting back into them. People get mad at them the same way they get mad at the homeless people or people who beg on the street. Maybe the garden will be a way for, for the homeless people to get back into, into some good things. And maybe seeing the homeless people getting back into a better life will be a way for some of the kids to think about what's happening to them. Thank you. I'm going to start reading right there. You should continue reading up until page 579. When you're done, answer the following questions. On page 572, how does the author portray the builder? Quote accurately from, from the text when drawing your inferences. On page 572, the fourth paragraph describes how the room looks and set up and where people are, are already sitting. How do you think this information affects how Darnell feels in comparison to Linda? How is Linda's article written? What's her goal? On page 574, Darnell speaks to the board about how both students and people who are homeless sometimes give up because they feel left behind. What does that tell you about Darnell? Answer these questions in your notebook or in Google Classroom. Make it a great day, scholars. I will see you next time.